folks. This time we have the Mitchell MB100. I ordered this on Black Friday 2021, actually. It showed up in March of 2022, and when it did, it was pretty much a disappointment. It had a laundry list of things wrong with it. It probably should have never been shipped out. So follow along, and I'll show you what it took to bring this thing up to playable state. Okay, let's get this party started. First, we'll need to strip this guy down to make all the repairs. So we'll take the old dead strings off. I'm clipping the ends off to keep from scratching the guitar. And get the back panel off to fix the electronics. And we'll strip the neck off to fix the neck angle. While the neck was off, I went ahead and checked the levelness of the frets. Um, there's always some high frets around the body joint on most lower end guitars, probably due to the mounting of the neck at the factory. So then go ahead and use a fret crowning file to add the crown back and follow it up with a little fret polishing with some fret erasers. So you get the scratches out from the filing. And then we'll follow it up with a little polishing of all the frets so they're nice and shiny. It cuts down on the gritty feel. Then a little oil, and I obviously need it. As you can see, it soaks it right in. Before I move to tightening up the tuning pegs, they're always a little slack, and they're worse on used guitars due to the vibration, but these were pretty loose, so to help with tuning stability, it's always a good idea to tighten these up. And the guitar came with scratches all over the back, and they were very visible. Like it had been slid around on a table or something along those lines. So here we're using a little polish with a cutting wheel to get the scratches out. And just go all over the guitar and kind of give it a little extra shine. It really pops after being polished like this. But the really big problem when I received the guitar was even with the saddles lowered all the way down to the bridge, that was the lowest the action would get. The only way to remedy this is to install a neck shim, like a Stumac neck shim we have here, a one degree one, which is the thickest one I've ever had to put in something that was brand new. And uh, also it's a guitar size one because the neck is a little smaller than a bass, so it fits a little better. And here we're doing a little rounding to just get it to fit into the neck pocket correctly. And then mount the neck, which is just push it into the pocket and reinstall the screws. Wanted to make sure that it looked like it wasn't too much. So got the screw started and then took a look to see. Looks like it's doing all right. So then put the rest of the screws in and to get them started, give them a whack with the screwdriver just to start them through the piece of, through the shim and tighten them up as you can see a little bit of the shim will stick out but here as we get the neck tight take a good look make sure the neck's in there straight and bolt it down solidly and cut off the extra shim i was being extra careful here because you don't actually want to cut the neck just cut off the shim so using a sharp razor blade as well So a couple of weeks after I had the bass, I decided to plug it in and play it, even with the super high action, and uh, lo and behold, I find there's no output. So here we're trying to ascertain which part may be at fault, but uh, all the grounds appear to be functional, and all of the other circuitry is functioning too. Went ahead and checked the ground between the bridge and the jack, and even that appears to be functioning. So we'll check the jack. And it functionally appears fine. The wiring appears good. And when checking it, uh, we have continuity. So tried plugging it in. And we get 
nothing. So try jiggling the wires a little bit, see if I can get connection. And then while well, going through the trials and tribulations of figuring out what's wrong, I pull the jack out a little bit and look, we have continuity. So it's an intermittent style fault. So either the jack or the wire to or from the jack is obviously bad. So we'll just go ahead and replace it because jacks are inexpensive. Snip out the old one. Here we're soldering on the leads to the new one. And reattach them from where the old one was. One of the first things I do when I get a guitar is rip the plastic coatings off of the pick guards and back covers. And in this case, when I did it, it ripped four of the screws literally out of the back of the body. So to an effect a repair on these, let's get this back cover out of the way. And we'll use toothpicks because apparently the holes were drilled too deep and the screws were tapered slightly. So it ripped material actually out of the body, which appears to be plywood, I hate to say, but it may not be. It's kind of tough to call, but... Stuck toothpicks in there and then broke them off. And while the glue was still fairly wet, went ahead and reinstalled the back cover with new, slightly larger screws to hopefully get a good bite and keep from pulling back out of the face of the guitar. Then as I was tuning up and testing, the precision based pickup appeared to not be working. So after a little more checking, it did have output, but with these screws even all the way up, it was still too far from the string to really pick up. So that calls for some springs. Here, I tried to see if the conical style single coil springs would work, but they weren't quite long enough. So we went with the humbucker style springs, which are longer, and simply just install those by putting them underneath the pickup and running the screw through them before reinstalling the pickup. Quick adjustment to make sure they're about the right height. Before we move on to adding some to the jazz style pickup, the bridge pickup was closer to the string, but still wasn't wouldn't go any higher because the foam on it was actually completely crushed. So in this case, a new piece of foam would have worked, but I did have the single coil spring, so I just went ahead and used those. They installed the same way. Just run the screw through the pickup and put the spring with the skinny end up and the fat end down, which I would think would be intuitive, but maybe not for most people. So, and reinstall the screws. Here, a couple of them were installed kind of at an angle, so I went ahead and kind of forced them into where they should have been. So it was kind of remounting them and just a little bit of adjustment to get them where you want them. And then after I set everything up, Got it all ready to go. It was a much nicer instrument to play. There you go, folks. I really love the orange color. I love the abalone inlays. Now that it's been set up, it plays really nice and sounds really good. It does have really a nice mix of sounds considering the two different pickups. So, But it took quite a bit of work, not nearly as much money. So in the long run, I do like it, but uh, I would say buyer beware. So if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you found it helpful or whatever, it helps me in the long run if you subscribe. So thanks, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.